Hey everyone, Banka Bricks here. I hope you're starting to get into the Halloween spirit. I know I am. This time of year has always been my favorite, and one of the reasons why is it's the perfect atmosphere to watch scary movies, whether that be something actually frightening or just another schlocky slasher. This year, I figured I'd combine two of my interests, Lego and horror movies. The Lego company tries to keep a family-friendly image, but let's throw that out the window and create some daunting dioramas. Before we dive headfirst into hair raising creations, let me explain how I actually create these sets. I use a free program called Stud.io, or Studio. This program allows me to build any set or idea I could possibly come up with, using a vast catalog of pieces at my, and your, disposal. A wicked feature of Studio is its sister program, the Studio Part Designer where you can create printed pieces and even design your own minifigures to import in a studio. Finally, you're able to render your creations with Studio's very own built-in software in order to create your very own scenes. I'm not sponsored by Studio, I just think it's a great program, and maybe after watching this video, you'll want to use it to recreate your favorite slasher, creature feature, or unnerving mystery movie. One last warning, this video will contain full spoilers for each mentioned movie. I can think of no better way to start off this video than with the original Halloween from 1978. This movie really brought about the explosion of slasher movies throughout the 80s, mostly due to its iconic Michael Myers, with his stark white mask, signature kitchen knife, and his unhuman-like movements. The shape of evil became the blueprint for many knockoffs and loving tributes still seen to this day. The Halloween series also may have inspired many other slashers to have incredibly low lows with limited highs in its sequels. I've decided to recreate the original 1978 Halloween and my personal favorite sequel, 1981's Halloween 2 for my dioramas. The first set is based off the Myers house, featuring a staircase leading up to two pitch black rooms, with a kitchen lying directly below those. I chose to design this area of the house so that some of the most iconic moments could be replicated, such as Bob's body swinging down, the shape coming out from the shadows behind Lori, Lori's tumble down the staircase, and of course the kitchen where Michael Myers can acquire his signature weapon. This set's figure should include Bob, one of the first unlucky victims of the series, Lori Strode, one of the first final girl characters, and the masked man, Michael Myers. Halloween 2 is one of the less hated movies in the Halloween franchise, yet it still has plenty of detractors. I adore it as it shows the shape become more of the unrelenting monster he is now known as, along with establishing the sibling relationship between Michael and Lori, which is either a pivotal plot point or completely ignored in many of the sequels. My set would be based off the room seen at the end of the film, with the many carts littered about, various pipes and gas canisters that become a death trap, and the door that Michael Myers bashes through. I'm glad I got to include Samuel Loomis in this set, as he's one of my absolute favorite parts of the Halloween movies. He is seen here with his lighter, which he uses to set Michael Myers and himself ablaze, killing the shape. Or not. Laurie Strode donning a hospital gown and revolver would be our next figure. Her revolver comes in handy when she blinds the shape creating the oh-so-signature blood streaks down Michael's mask. Michael himself now comes equipped with his scalpel, fitting of this movie's hospital setting. Traveling back to 1980, what would become the most infamous slasher series began with the original Friday the 13th. This low-budget and frankly low-entertainment film would later birth the iconic Jason Voorhees. But for this film, our mysterious lakeside murderer is none other than Mrs. Voorhees, his mother, this first set would see us take to the water, having some waves and a boat near the beach and dock of Camp Crystal Lake. This later becomes the battleground for our final girl Alice as she squares off with the evil Pamela Voorhees. Their lakeside scuffle comes to a head with a beheading, and then it's all over. Except for the little boy Jason Voorhees jump scare. If I was going to do an original Friday the 13th set, I had to include probably the most iconic part of the movie, even if it was all a dream. Skipping over a movie, let us discuss Friday the 13th, Part 3, where we first see Jason Voorhees don his hockey mask. I've decided to base my diorama on the barn seen at the end of the film, as it not only allows me to have an interesting build, 
but lets me include the biker gang set of characters, who are really the best part of this movie. Fox and Loco get impaled by pitchforks, and Ali loses his head, and then his life trying to fight Jason. Our next figure would be Chris Higgins, this film's final survivor. And of course, let us end on the J-Man himself, of course equipped with his much beloved machete. Let us now tackle the more religious and least likely series to get a Lego set. I have such sets to show you. Hellraiser is a movie franchise known for having 10 movies and 2 good ones. This series has some stunning imagery and such an interesting world. The first film's low budget is astounding, given how good its effects are. This series is known for its main antagonists, the Cenobites, demons to some, angels to others. Our first set is the attic seen in the original Hellraiser, where Frank's life is taken away, restored, and then torn apart again. The construction of the attic is pretty simple, but is livened up with the addition of the Cenobites' pillars and hook chains. Our human figures are the disgusting deviant Frank Cotton, along with his niece, and one of my favorite horror characters, Kirsty Cotton. Moving on to the Cenobites, we have Pinhead, the apparent leader of the group and icon of the franchise. He of course holds the Lament configuration, the puzzle box used to summon the gash. Our next figure would be Hell's right hand man, the Chatterer, my favorite Cenobite. Then moving on would be the so called Surgeon Butterball, the most intelligent of the gash. And our final figure would be the female Cenobite. Hellraiser 2 sees us travel to the realm of the Cenobites and meet their god, the mysterious Leviathan, who unlike many things in horror, is thankfully left undescribed. This diorama would feature a small representation of Leviathan, made to appear in the background, along with some of his realm's maze-like construction. Our figures would be the returning Kirsty Cotton, aided by the puzzle-solving prodigy, Tiffany, Returning from the first Hellraiser, much like Frank, is his lover, Julia, who is given form again and is given a fitting end in her own hell. The final figure would be Dr. Chenard, or known by his Cenobite name, simply as the Doctor, along with his phallic-like cord construction. From a religious series to a sci-fi one, let us discuss the Predator movies. The least scary in this video, I still adore the first two movies, along with the most recent in the franchise, Prey. I'm covering the first two, so this video follows a somewhat timeline of horror, but maybe next year I'll cover Prey, as it may be getting a sequel. My set is based off the final location in the movie, where our protagonist Dutch finally fights the predator. The diorama would have a small riverbed, along with plenty of trees and jungle foliage, notably a vine which either figure could use. I've included a scorpion as a nod to one of the film's most memorable scenes. The Predator figure would come with a molded mask and hairpiece, and a molded head for its ugly, unmasked face. I think this set should also include an extra transparent figure to mimic the cloaking that is used throughout the movie. Dutch's figure is pretty simple, coming with muscles that would make Arnold proud, and a bow, using a primitive tool to face off his futuristic foe. The next set is based off the ending location of Predator 2, within the Yocha's ship having the columns in intricately designed patterns that line the ship's walls. The ground would be covered in pieces to mimic the fog that blankets this area in the movie. Finally, our figures would be Lieutenant Mike Harrigan as he faces off and kills his predator with its own weapon. This set should also include some of the various other Yauchas that appear, and the pistol that is awarded to the lieutenant for defeating one of their own. Our next series takes us to the 2000s with the infamous Saw franchise known for its twists and turns, and of course, its brutal traps. I've only seen the first Saw movie, but don't worry, as I've been able to include two iconic locales. The first Saw sees two men trapped in a bathroom, with limited time and means to escape. I of course had to recreate the bathroom for our first set. I've done my best to include as many features from the bathroom as I could, including the pipes, clock, sinks and two-way mirror, bathtub and toilet. I've also included the tape recorder and both tapes, along with the photos that Adam hides in the bathtub. Our first figure would be, uh, actually, I forget this guy's name and profession. My name is Lawrence Gordon, I'm a doctor. Oh, thank you, Dr. Gordon. He would, of course, come with the eponymous saw. And here you can see I've even removed his leg, too. 
Opposite to him would be Adam, who would have the pistol, and our final figure would be the dead man lying in the middle of the room. Okay, is everyone who hasn't seen Saw gone yet? Like seriously, I gave a spoiler warning at the beginning. If you haven't seen Saw, watch it and come back. It's worth it. I promise. Okay, our final figure is actually Jigsaw, the creator of the traps. Our next and final diorama for this video would be based on the most iconic trap from the entire Saw franchise. The reverse bear trap room, also seen in the original Saw. The layout of the room could have a chair in the middle with a massive light behind it, and two taller lights off to the side. Next to the chair would be a TV, where in the movie we see a reverse bear trap demonstrated. Our figures would be Eric, who is unfortunate enough to have a key in his stomach and Amanda Young, a prominent character in the Saw franchise, who would have a newly molded reverse bear trap headpiece. Those were some of the most iconic horror and slasher movies turned into Lego sets, but those were just my ideas. Let me know what I missed, and maybe try out Lego Studio to make your own. This video was fun, and maybe next year I'll cover some gaps in our horror timeline, like Scream, Alien, or the few actually good of Friday the 13th, with Tommy Jarvis. I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. I'd appreciate it. And if you want to see more LEGO content like this in the future, subscribe. I'll see you next time.